Okay, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I am Ronko Pop, and uh, in my last uh, Making Comics with Procreate tutorial, we went over a little bit of scripting, um, pretty much how to put, put together a comic book script as far as the way I do it. Um, as I said in that video, and I'll probably say in future videos, there's really no right or wrong way to make a, to make a um, comic. You know, whatever you feel like is doing it. I mean, obviously there are structural rules. There are things you want to take into effect, which I'm going to try to explain in these tutorials. But I, if you draw a certain way, then draw your comic that way. Um, there are certain things that are work better for other artists than they do for for, for someone else. And that's fine too. So uh, what we're going getting into today is laying out your comic book page. Because even though I say... Uh, there's really no wrong way to do it. There are some tips and tricks that you can use to actually make your comic book page stand out a little bit better. Uh, let's get into here real quick. Oh, didn't want to do that. Add to stream. And so what we got here is a comic book page layout. Um, this is one of the early pages from my upcoming book, The Adventures of Red Bee. Not The Adventures of Red Bee, The Amazing Red Bee. I've gone back and forth with that, with that title in the past, but it's The Amazing Red Bee. And uh, yes, yeah, so this is an early page in the book. It's not out yet. It's the, it will be crowdfunded um, soon enough. I am working on getting the mailing list page up. So look for that uh, announcement coming in the next couple of weeks. But what I've done here is, you know, I have a five panel page. And what I'm doing is just trying to get the flow of the layout. What I started with, really, if I'll take away all this stuff here, this is kind of what I started with. And um, yeah, so you can see it's very rough layout, and then I go back in, and I haven't done uh, final inks or anything like that on this yet, um, because I'm still trying to rough out what I want to happen. And I put in the speech bubbles, trying to figure out what they're going to say most likely. It'll probably be edited a little bit more and refined more in the future before I put in the final letters. But yeah, so we got the speech bubbles, then we got the panels with a little bit of the background there. And then what I've done is put in the a uh, little bit more refined lines for the inks. Not so much for exactly what, what I'm going to ink, but this compared to this, it makes it a little bit more defined and you, you know where your characters are. So what I've done here, though, in this tutorial is I'm going to show you kind of my process going from this to this, whoops, from this to this. So you might not see a big difference, but there is a subtle difference there that just makes the characters and the whole page pop a little bit more, especially in this bottom panel here on panel five. You can see here the character is going to be flying at the reader. It's kind of breaking through the panel borders on the bottom there. But if I went with the first one, he's much smaller and it takes away some of the impact of that panel. So what I've done here is here's the initial panel layout we have in this first panel here. Red Bee and Mothball and they're facing off. Red Bee's coming down to confront him. Not too bad of a panel, I would say. You know, pretty, pretty fine for what it is. Then we got this panel number two, Red Bee holding his ground, telling Mothball it's time's up. Still, again, simple layout, nothing too, nothing too crazy. Panel three, we got Red Bee facing Mothball. They have some more dialogue going back and forth between them. We have the building in the background. And we got this full body shot, and you can kind of see this in most of the page. Full body shot almost of Red Bee in panel one. Three quarters of a body shot of panel two. Panel three, we got full body shots of both Red Bee and Mothball. Panel four, we get a close-up close up of uh, Red Bee's, the back of his head. But then we got a full body shot of Mothball in panel four. So that is okay, but what it does, it kind of lessens the, the drama of the scene and it takes away some of the impact. So what I've done, you can kind of see here in panel one, what I've done is enlarge Mothball here and Red Bee's kind of in the background. He's come flying down to meet him. Panel two, we have here, some of the letters would probably be cut off. And this happens in general uh, when you're putting down your letters for your comic books. It, the, the letters and the speech bubbles will cut off parts of the drawings. That just happens. But what I've done is not only have I made Red B a little bit bigger to emphasize the drama there, but I've lowered him too. So now the speech bubble doesn't cut off much, if any, of him there. 
So in panel three, like I said, this is very, um, it's very simple. It's very easy. It's very like run of the mill kind of layout here in panel three. They're full body shots, background, nothing really pump, punches you, or pops out of the panel. But if you make the characters just a little bit bigger, kind of brings them to the foreground and leaves the buildings in the background. And then what, that's kind of the same concept here in panel four. Panel four, the original one, more of a back shot of Red B, and we get the mothball here. But if you just punch it up, you bring in the camera in closer, and you're seeing still the back of Red B, but only the top part of his half. And this actually enhances uh, mothball. And you can see he's in the background, but he has a dramatic pose still, but it's just a little bit more emphasized because of how close the camera is to the back of Red B's head. And then again, like I've already pointed out, panel five. So we have these speed lines going here. Moth Mothball is going to be speeding at Red B, flying towards him. Not too bad. Speed lines help with the drama of the scene there. But keeping the speed lines in place and then just making Mothball that much bigger. And then a lot of people will not do this or won't think about doing it. But certain times you can break the panel borders with the, with the character. And that will just emphasize that motion or that that scene a little bit better. So by breaking the panel borders of Mothball's hands here while he's flying, it almost looks like he's flying out of the panel. And that just gives it that little extra punch, the little extra oomph to that panel drawing. So yeah, when you're doing, go back to here real quick. When you're doing your page layout, you want to keep these types of things in, in mind while you're uh, working that comic book page. You wanna keep in mind not only the scene that you're drawing, but trying to make sure you get those different camera angles, more close up, having the characters further in the background, having some characters maybe break panel borders if that's what's called for, or that might look better for the comic book page. That's another reason I like ma making comic books and working as a page in whole as compared to making something like Topless or Webtoons. Well, I appreciate webtoons a lot. Uh, looking at webtoons, it takes to me it takes away the the value and the drama that is on the comic book page. You have this whole comic book page, and it kind of flows as one piece. You're reading panel to panel. You're seeing different aspects of it, and you're kind of getting different angles. In, and in webtoons, to me, it feels more just like storyboards. You're getting one shot here, the next shot, the next shot. The next shot but with a comic book page you get the whole thing um, as a comic book page and it, it works as one cohesive unit not as individual storyboards and to show you an example of this um, one of my favorite artists that has just like a crazy style Chris Bocciolo or Chris Bocciolo not exactly sure how you pronounce his last name but his style is pretty intense and pretty crazy and I just wanted to bring this up as just an example of what I was talking about with different panels and why I prefer looking at the comic book page as a whole instead of breaking it down into storyboards, basically. Check out this. This is from a Doctor Strange, a uh, Doctor Strange comic. And I'm not sure. I think this was a double page spread. And so that alone lets you, uh, you know, get into even more options and more ways to tell a story when you're using two pages as opposed to one but then you have this plant that's crawling through both pages and what is what you're able to do that with that is it breaks off and it kind of flows the reader's eye throughout the entire page and you still have the individual panels but it's all a one cohesive or in this case, maybe two cohesive comic book pages as one piece of art instead of panel one, panel two, panel three. Uh, maybe there's like vines growing in between the panels to show that they connect. But in this way, you get so much more artistic creativity to really put that comic book page um, together and really do some pretty incredible things with it. So that's just uh, one way I wanted to you know, point out different ways that I appreciate and that I like to work as a comic book page instead of looking at each comic book page as an individual set of panels. Yes, there are panels one through whatever, how many panels are on that page, but in the end, it is one cohesive unit, one cohesive piece of artwork that is trying to get the uh, story to be told throughout.
the uh, the page instead of individual, like I said, individual storyboards, which are used in TV shows or movies and things like that. All right, that's going to do it for me and this video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. Hit that bell for notifications. And uh, yeah, let me know down below if you're enjoying these videos, if you're enjoying these tutorials, and if you have any other options that the way on the way you make comics. Uh, let me know about those in the comments, and I might check them out because I am always, like myself, I am always looking for different ways to make my comics, better ways to make comics, better ways that might work for myself. Maybe your way might not work for me. My way might not work for you, but through the creative process, we can find different ways to create our comic books, and that's what it is all about, creating awesome comic books. Like I said in the beginning, I do not have my mailing list signups page up yet for The Amazing Red Bee, but hopefully I will have that up within the next couple of weeks because I do plan on crowdfunding that all-ages spectacular graphic novel, The Amazing Red Bee. It's going to be awesome. Keep an eye out for that, and like I said, hit that bell for notifications click the like button, and subscribe so you don't miss any more of the tutorials and any more of my drawing streams that will be coming up. All right, talk to you later.